At the end of this video, you'll be able to create something like this. Of course, this is just the basic stuff. You can still improve so many things. Quest system. If there is anything that can describe an RPG game, that will be quest. All RPG games, Genshin, Elden Ring, Dark Souls, you name it, all have quests. Sadly, RPG Maker doesn't have a built-in quest system. The developers need to find a way to make it themselves. Making the quest is not hard, but making the quest log can be difficult and complicated sometimes. Of course, there are tons of quest system plugins out there complete with the quest log. However, these plugins are a little confusing to use, especially at the beginning, at least for me. That's why in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys one of the methods to make a quest log using RPG Maker's Show Choice feature, and of course, with the help of a plugin. Before we start, I would like you to know that much like the key item quest log method, this method is not compatible with Visustella message core. So if your game heavily uses Visustella's message core, then I'm sorry, but you might need to find another method. And also, in this video, I focus more on showing how to set up and make the quest log, not the quest. So having a prior basic understanding of eventing a quest will make it much easier for you to understand, or else things can be a little complicated. With that being said, let's get to the tutorial. To do this, you will need to download a plugin called Choice Expansion by Penguin's Bed. The download link will be in the description. Penguin's Bad plugins are licensed under MIT license, so you can use it for commercial and non-commercial use. Once you're on the download page, download the ChoiceXGS. The main reason we use this plugin is because it enables us to bypass the 6 choices limit in RPG Maker NZ simply by putting these choices on succession. It also enables us to edit the choice window position and also enables us to show or hide a choice based on a condition. After you download the plugin, apply the plugin to your RPG Maker project and we are ready to go. For this tutorial, I've already made two very basic quests. The first quest is to pet this cat twice and the second quest is to interact with this character. Let's have a look on how to set up these quests. So as you can see here, it's a really normal quest offering, the player can accept or reject. If the player accepts, you'll need to set up some things. But first of all, the switch. Now, you don't need to put the switch on every quest. You only need to put it once and turn it on. It can either be on the beginning of your game or in your very first quest. What's important is that this switch needs to be turned on all the time. What's important is these three things. So every quest, you need to make one switch for the quest and one variable for the quest. The switch is used to control the quest log. As for the variable, it's used to control the flow of the quest. Now, this third variable, the quest count variable, is used to count the total number of the quest so once your quest reaches zero or there are no more quests left, the quest log will simply tell you that there is no more quests. And so every time you start a new quest, this quest count variable will be added by one. Remember to keep the switch on and the variable of the quest, turn it into one. And now we take a look on how you finish the quest. As you can see here, every time I interact the, with the cat, the variable pet the cat will be added by one. And when it once it's reached it, it reached three, then the quest is done. Now, when the quest is done, you'll need to control the switch and turn it off. And for the quest count, you'll need to subtract it by one. So remember, every time you finish a quest. Turn that quest switch off and 
control the quest counter variable and subtract it by one. It goes the same for the other quest. As you can see here in the second quest, we have one switch for the quest, one variable for the quest, and add one um, and the variable quest count added by one. And once this quest is done, it's the same. We turn off the switch and subtract the variable quest count by one. Now that you've understand how we should set up the quest, we can get into how to make the quest lock. To make the quest lock, we'll need to make a common event. So let's make a common event called quest lock and set the trigger to parallel. The switch for the trigger is the switch quest lock. The very first switch that you need to put in the beginning of your game and must be turned on all the time. Now we need to make a method to access the quest lock. There are many ways you can do it. You can do it by uh, using a button picture plugin and make an interface to access it. Or maybe you can add some extra menu on the menu screen to access the quest lock. But on this tutorial, I'm going to go with the simplest way, which is using a button conditional branch. So you go to conditional branch, choose the button, and choose any button you want. For this tutorial, I'll go with page up. So when the button page up is being pressed, the quest lock will be called. So now we'll be, we'll be setting up for the quest lock. First of all, we go to plugin command and choose the choice expansion plugin and we choose the choice post command. You use, the, you use this command to um, edit the position of your choice window and I want the quest lock to be on the top left corner of my screen. So I'll set the X to 16 and Y to 16. You can left the row at zero. And now to make the quest list or the uh, choice list, you simply need to do the normal show choice feature. But the difference is before we put our quest name or write down our quest name, we need to put down the condition first. And the condition is based on the switch of each quest. So how do we make the condition? We simply need to write if S stands for switch bracket and here's where the ID of the switch uh, be put to and you write the name of the quest pet a cat so what this condition basically means is that if the switch with ID 2 which is our the, the ID of our uh, first quest uh, switch ID then is, uh, is turned on then this choice will be displayed displayed and if it's off then this choice will be hidden we do the same thing for the second quest if switch ID 3 is on then show the choice of talk to John so this is how you set up for the condition of uh, the quest. So it will only appear once this condition has been fulfilled. And you can you can also use variables for this. So it's not limited to just switch. To change from using switch to variable, you simply need to change the s into you simply need to change the s into v, and the id is the same. You write it down right here. After that, we'll need to show a condition where there is no more quest left. To do that, we'll need to make a conditional branch with variable quest count equals to zero. So if variable quest count is equal to zero, then when you call the quest lock, there, there will be a text. There is no ongoing quest so 
this is basically the basic structure of the uh, quest log we will test it after this so we still need to add the item of uh, each choice but before we go into that let's test it first as you can see here we are already on the game now if you try pressing page up now which is the keyword of our uh, quest log nothing will appear because the switch that activates the common event hasn't been turned on yet now we'll try to talk to the uh, first quest giver at the two times yes and now let's try to press the page up and as you can see our first quest has appeared in the quest log and now we'll, we'll try to talk to the uh, giver of the second quest talk to John yes and we press page up and as you can see our second quest has been added to the list to the quest log and now we'll try to uh, finish the quest we'll pet the cat two times one two if pet the cat two times this means that the uh, quest has been finished and let's check it on the quest log again and as you can see the first quest pet, pet the cat has disappeared and now we'll try to do the second quest if talks to John and when we check our quest log there is no ongoing quest now we will add the transition into the quest log and also add contents to the quest on the quest log to add the transition you can do it any way you want but I'll do a simple one in here I'll use picture so I show picture and I've made a background which is basically just a black color but it produce opacity I'll set the opacity to zero and we made a fading animation move it to full opacity in just 30 seconds and wait for it and at the end at the end of the statement We'll move it back to zero opacity in 30 seconds and then we erase the picture and now to create the content of each quest obviously you can do it any way you want you can maybe use uh, the text message or any way any other way but in this uh, in this tutorial and the best way i know is to use a picture so you will need to make a picture uh, that contains the description the objectives and all the other things that you you need you want to show in in your uh, in your quest log and call it in this choice so I've made uh, some very basic picture show picture number two we we use a number that is higher than the background so it will be above the background not below the background and I'll take the first quest image set the opacity to zero and add some fading animation we do the same for the second quest just change the picture now obviously if you keep it like this and didn't change anything um, after you close the quest log, the image remains there. So you will need to do something to remove the image. And to do that, we'll, we will need to um, do another show choice. And this time just disallow cancel. And just use one choice. And you can write anything you want. Um, in this tutorial, I'll just write understood. <laughs> And inside this choice, you'll move the picture to zero opacity and then erase it. Just like this. Copy it. And you're done. So, um, usually, when you use this uh, show choice uh, feature without doing any editing, the the window will be appear on the bottom right corner of your screen if you wish to change it you can um, 
add another uh, plugin command from the choice expansion plugin and simply set it before this choice and for now let us test what we have gotten so far okay now we're in the game we'll talk to the first quest giver at the get two times yes we'll check page up transition and it appears now as you can see when i click on the uh, quest name this will appear and once i click understood it will disappear we'll talk to the second quest giver talk to john yes page up transition and now we have our two quests if we click the first quest then this will appear and if we press on the second quest of the john this will appear we'll need to do both quests one two the first quest is finished now there is only the second quest we talk to john we've talked to john the first quest is finished we check and there is no ongoing quest so yeah at this point you're basically done um, that's how you make a choice based quest log you may see how it fits on your project and maybe you can apply it but there are some things that i still want to add that might help you so the first thing is as you can see this common event is starting to become bloated and later on when you already have a lot of quests there will be so much command and it will be really hard to read so a simple solution for this is that to make a common event for each quest so for example i want to make a common event for both of these quests um, i made the first common event at cat cat and talk to john and then i simply need to cut everything and move it here same with the second quest cut it and move it here now in the quest log you simply need to call the common event this common event cut a cat and this one common event talk to john it will work basically the same and it will be more organized and it will be easier to read and uh, modify it later on also don't forget to change the cancel into branch or any empty choice or just make another choice that allow you to exit the quest lock in will another thing is that this choice expansion plugin by premium bad actually has a really cool feature it's called uh, choice help so it's basically a description that will appear on the bottom of your screen um, when you hover over a choice and to add it you simply need to put it in a comment so you put in a comment choice help and you put whatever you want here for example maybe this this is the first quest copy paste that over here and this is the second quest as you can see here now every choice has their own description so yeah that's basically how you make a choice based quest log in rpg maker mz i haven't tried it on mv but since the plugin is available for both mz and mv i think it's probably going to work too surely this method is not the best one out there Using legit quest system plugins are much better. But self-made method like this allow you to be more flexible with how it works, since you made it yourself. Very well then, that's all I can share for today. I sincerely apologize if there is anything I said or did that offended you. I hope the tutorial helps, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.